my name is Asad. I'm 21 years old, young, rather. And um, we out in, on a Highline boardwalk, I think that's what it's called. Is that what this shit is called? And I'm just enjoying the view. <laughs> TMS, 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 too much soul. Coke in the nose, paint on the fur. My smack on that ass, my jizz in a her. Reach for the heavens, all praises do. I was born in North Philadelphia, and I was raised there pretty much my whole life. Grew up in Area Avenue, so I'm just like this little snot-nosed kid running around eating cereal every morning. I was lucky enough to, to watch the major figures blow up, and that was like the biggest thing that Philly had at the time. You know, like Lava is my cousin, so like I'm sitting here watching my cousin be on TV. Like it wasn't like MTV, but it was Urban Expressions. Remember that shit, Urban Expressions? And that was like a big deal. So, you know, as I got older, I knew what I wanted to do, and I just applied myself. So, you know, yo, today has I have to do the Birdman rub because it's just cold as shit. This Philly cold right here. Like Philly cold is the worst cold. Like this cold, this shit is cold, but it ain't that cold. Philly cold, cause you be you be annoyed. At least we cold and we got a nice scenery, the <laughs> landscape and stuff, the people, the energy. It's cool. It's calm. If fashion has a big role of hip hop. It's, it's one of the more. It's one of those things when you look at somebody that has something, you're like, oh, well, I wanted to have a gold chain. The Slick Rick had a gold chain. And it's like, well, when I saw Pharrell wear BBC, I wanted Bape and BBC because I saw Pharrell do it. And that was kind of really the only inspiration I could say I pulled directly was like Biggie, you know, just the braggadocious, the expensive luxury, you know, all that shit that you couldn't get at no regular store. And, um, you know, as far as curtains, you know, I recently, I say over the last four months, we've become friends, you know. We first met, we had to feel each other out. So it was like, you know, we're two ego-headed motherfuckers. So, you know, we clashed a lot, but one thing about him, he's been in my best interest and he's taught me a lot. So, that kid has style. I don't think, I think he's one of the most stylish rappers in the history of, of hip hop. You know, it, I appreciate everybody, what everybody's doing, because at the end of the day, it, we're not just wearing the clothes like, okay, we got on thousand dollar jeans, we're shitting on you. It's like, no, look at what, what, look at what went behind making these jeans. Like, Ballman, for instance, like you, you look at Troy and he has on Ballman jeans, like why is he wearing Ballman jeans? He's the only person with those jeans. Like this sweater I have on is vintage, is vintage bape. It's very ape. Like this sweater was made in what, 97? And I kept it in good condition in over the years. And it has a history. It's not about the price tag. It's more so about the memories, the nostalgia that it carries. So in terms of fashion and hip hop, it's, it's like the shit because you want kids to aspire, you know what I'm saying? You want to inspire them and you want them to aspire to be greater than you or just great in their own life. Philly taught me to be a strong person in this world and not give a fuck about what nobody thinks because at home, I was doing the same shit before it was anybody knew who I was. I was doing this before it was a, a song recorded. And you know, it's every day I look at how can I make my life better and I just look at Philadelphia like, that was where I started, look where I am now, and now where I'm gonna take it next, so. That's what I love about Philadelphia. In terms of music, I knew I couldn't sound like them. I just knew I couldn't shoot a nigga in his neck, I couldn't rob a nigga for nothing, because I'm not a thief, not a killer. That's just not me. So I'm not gonna go out of my character to make someone like me. I, I'm not gonna do that, because you are not liking me for who I am. And that's why I have a select amount of friends, because it's like, these motherfuckers fuck with me 100% because of who I am, not because of what I got, not because of what I like, not because of what I talk, but who I am. But yeah, you know, shouts out to Philadelphia, man. That's a good place, but at the end of the day, everybody gotta, everybody gotta expand. The difference between loud and cocky, but at the same time, you gotta know the difference between quiet and humble. Because if you don't say nothing, ain't nobody gonna hear you. Like. It's a difference. Like you could be quiet and you be, you could be the dumbest motherfucker in the world. That don't make you humble because you're quiet. But it don't make you dumb because you're confident. My humbleness is for me, not for nobody else. My confidence is for you because I want it to rub off so you can feel like you the shit too. So I don't gotta feel alone out here. Like I'm the only one that's doing something with my life. So you know that's more so of a, a gift than anything. Than for me, confidence ain't nothing for me because I already know I'm the shit. I've been understood that in my mind a long time ago, before I had shit. 
When I was homeless, I knew that. But that's what kept me going in this like, people don't know how to process somebody that's very passionate about what they feel because they're not used to it. You know, but get used to me. Like, I ain't changing. I ain't going nowhere and I ain't changing. I am, I'm 21. I'm going to be here until I'm like 70. Every, after every question, you got to give a bird man, bro. <laughs> I can't feel my ears no more. <laughs> I forgot I had them. <laughs> I can give the exact explanation of what Dirty Middle Class is. It's that motherfucker right there. Like, he started it. It came from an idea that he had. Dirty Middle Class just represents for all the kids that didn't really have that much, but it might have looked like they had something, but they really ain't had nothing. That's really what it is because, you know, whereas some kids had homes to go to, I grew up in a real, like, broken home situation where I was living house to house at a young age. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't living with either one of my parents at a lot of, for a strong point of my life. So I related to that because it's like, I was wearing all this high end shit. I had bait and ice cream, but I didn't live with my mom or dad. It wasn't like I was paying for my own. I was fucking 14. But that goes to show you that I was living beyond my means, but it was something I wanted to do. And now I apply that shit and I can afford it now and it's, I'm with it. You know what I'm saying? I got it and I'm gonna keep getting it. And, um, but. You know, essentially, he would have to tell you everything that Dirty Middle Class stand for. All I can say and speak for is what my heart tells me to do. And that's how I'm repping for Dirty Middle Class. It's like, black kids dream. I'm telling kids to do good with your life, get your life right. Like, you don't gotta work a job at McDonald's. Say fuck that little $100 a week and get your own money. Even if you're doing some street shit, apply it on some good shit. Like, every street nigga ain't a bad nigga just because he sell drugs. That don't mean he bad because America sells drugs too. They do the same shit you do and they just called it legal. So it's like, get on your grind. Like, and like Jeezy said, Jeezy said, buy your mama a house and buy you one too. Every day you should wake up and think, how could you make someone else's life better if not your own? So I took that same principle and I took that advice and I said, I'm a rep for these kids and I'm telling kids I finished school when I was 16. It wasn't because I was smart. It was just because they dumb. <laughs> You know, I knew how to get around. I was a straight C student, but I graduated early and like, I fuck with dirty middle class because we don't give a fuck. We do what the fuck we want. And, and who gonna say something? Huh, I don't know if the world ready for me. Spoil rotten, whatever I want, she get it for me. Go and do it, it's possible. It's there for you to see and for you to do. So that's my thing, life's a luxury. Just don't take that shit for granted. That's pretty much all.